This video is made for adult collectors because my fingers are in absolute agony after shooting this video. combiners is expensive and we touched on getting cheap ones before but what if you just want a chug minasaur that's a very specific requirement but they did just make a new one and subsequently fans project re-released their old one in g2 colors so you have options but which one is more worth it before i get into the topic of this video though i do want to mention i have a patreon it'll be linked in the description down below god i cannot speak english uh, if you want to support the channel even further, you do not have to if you do not want to, but it is there. So I'm going to start off with prices because that's going to be a big factor for a lot of people, especially today when like buying milk it, or cheese actually was $8 for me. Fans Project Minasaur ends up being, oh my God, it ends up being 440 Canadian dollars. And Legacy Minasaur is a much nicer, quote unquote, 270 Canadian dollars. That is going to be very important later on. Before we do the combiner, like the full combined set first, let's quickly get through the individual robots and then get onto the combined mode, starting with Dragstrip. Dragstrip here comes in two flavors, fancy schmancy and delicate, or kind of basic but durable. That's the biggest takeaway from this whole comparison of the sets. The legacy one is much nicer to handle. It's not sharp, it's not delicate, the joints are solid, the transformation is just more satisfying, but I really like how the Fans Project one looks. The use of parts and the shaping is super cool. Legacy really does need more paint too, and less like yellow, but there are toy hacks so I could clean it up if I want to. I really don't like the gun on the Fans Project one. It's incredibly small and can get lost super easily. The Legacy one's dual cannons are just awesome. This is probably the only part where I like the Fans Project one a lot more. It looks super cool and unique. It's a bit flat and I forgot to fold the leg panels around, sorry. But the way it uses alt mode parts and compresses its limbs into the alt mode is super cool, but we'll get to that later. The Legacy one, on the other hand, is really nice, but a little bit basic. Just like Drag Strip, it's missing a lot of paint, which can be fixed by stickers, but that is more stuff you have to buy. But both of them look neat in their own merit, which is nice. I just much prefer the Fans Project's look to the Legacy one. I really don't like Legacy Wild Rider. It is not fun. It takes everything from the Combiner Wars conversion it's based off of and makes it just slightly worse. The clearances just don't work. The hips like to click in that like straight down or out or too far. It's so annoyingly weird. And the backpack, uh, don't even get me started on the backpack. I do like the deco though. I think that looks pretty sharp. The Fans Project one also has some weird oddities. It's more poseable though. Like you can make him look a lot more dynamic. However, the feet suck. They're pointing down all the time due to how the parts are shaped and laid out. So standing him straight, you have to bow his knees in and it looks weird, but in motion, it's fine. The shin parts with the wheels are what get in the way because the wheels are too big. And the plastic here feels very thin and it's kind of scary. That's, that's, that's something I can say about all the Fans Project toys is they are very thin feeling. Both these figures have weird oddities, but I will say, I think the Fans Project one works a bit better for me. Breakdown on both is much of the same figure with their former Wild Rider cells, but the Legacy and Fans Project ones slightly improve their Wild Rider molds. Legacy feels a bit better to handle, and the Fans Project one is actually able to stand properly, but I got hit with the QC Gremlin, and the Fans Project Breakdown has no hand. It's missing, and pain. But he also lives in leg mode, so it doesn't really bother me too, too much because I'm not going to see the hand. So the cars, they all have their ups and downs, opposing each other. The build quality I have to give to Hasbro. They did a banger job on making each car bot feel strong and sturdy. And that Wild Rider versus Breakdown comparison, you can really see the improvements in Breakdown. It's really cool. If you wanna know more about that, I highly recommend checking out Dr. Lockdown's video on Wild Rider. It'll be, not Wild Rider, Breakdown. I'm stupid. It'll be linked in the description down below. The Fans Project ones feel sharp and a bit cheap. Thin materials and engineering that gets in the way of functionality but the Fans Project ones to me look so much better. They seem a lot more visually dynamic and interesting, but all those little bits scare me, especially on drag strip. Which, uh, which aesthetic do you like better? So that grouping is the third party and that grouping is the Hasbro. Personally, I like the third party. 
Yeah? Yeah, they're more um, what I know of Transformers to be. Really? Because these are based on the G1 designs, the ones oh. you would have grown up with. Yeah. That's neat. Like that one, that red and blue one? That one? I really like that one. Yeah, he's cool. He's my favorite. Motormaster, on the other hand, the Legacy is the clear winner for me. Legacy Motormaster is solid and sturdy. Everything pegs in and has a place to go, and the joints are smooth and strong enough to hold the toy, but it's not too tight and it feels like you're breaking it. I just wish he had heels. Fans Projects, on the other hand, oh boy, is this rough. The panels, parts that don't really tab in, or well, at all. The coattails, which look really cool, but weigh the figure down. The heels that suck, the sharp plastic, and the really stiff, unnecessary ratchets drive me nuts but it looks absolutely amazing. Like, I much prefer the look of the Fans Project one over the Legacy one, but the Fans Project one literally scratched my hand. So I put I put him down and he took a dive off the table because he can't stand, because this, this, this whole like collapsing assembly kind of doesn't hold together and he could just go at any point. And he fell. And uh, yeah, that was scary. I thought I broke, I just checked it, nothing's broken, but you know. He's going to stand like this now for the next shot because he he deserves it. Each one comes with a set of guns. Vance Project ones are a bit gimpy, but the Legacy ones are like dualies, which is nice. And then there's Breakdown who comes with a piece of parts forming they want you to use as an axe. Vance Project Motormaster comes with some cool ASP shotguns, but he can't really hold the sword. His combined parts can plug onto him to make weapons and things, but he always falls over. So I just plug the shoulder ones in and leave it. The Legacy one can hold the sword and it has like a base mode for its combined parts that I have shown already in another video. But if we're going by complete sets, the Fans Project one looks awesome, but the Legacy one feels better. Handling them as toys, the Hasbro one is just, it just does a better job. There was the yellowing, quote unquote yellowing issue on the first couple of batches that made it out, which actually wasn't yellowing. I believe it was more like a plastic molding error that made it like discolor immediately out of the factory. Hasbro would replace them if you had problems. And then like the shoulders, the shoulder pads on the combined mode cracking. Um, again, Hasbro will replace the figure if you if you have that problem. So at least there's a solution for it. So the posing on the individual robot, I just want to show you first how much of a mess the Fans Project one creates. Look at, look, <laughs> mess. But for starters, you've already seen the articulation of this. So I made a video on that. You can check it out. It'll be, I'll probably remember to link it below. Sometimes I forget. But I want to go through real quick the deluxes from Hasbro because they're, they're just head rotates, arms, shoulders, biceps, elbows, no wrists, hips, thighs, knees, ankle pivots. That's pretty much all of them except for um, the like breakdown Wild Rider mold it can move its feet up which is really nice. Let's talk about the fans pro- You need to get out of the way. He fell over, okay. Head on ball joint, shoulders on ball joint, shoulders go in and out, elbow joint, bicep rotation, wrist swivel or wrist completely missing, waist joint, hips are on ball joints, you got thigh rotation, you have double jointed knees, and then ankles can pivot, move, swivel on this one here, they can't go higher because the tires are bigger. Like these are designed designed the same way, but because the wheels here are smaller than this one, the foot can sit flat. But because this one's got beefier tires, the foot doesn't sit flat and it's on an angle, kind of annoying. And then this dude, this guy, unnecessary ratchet joints is basically what I'm going to say. Head on a ball joint, so you can you can do whatever. Shoulders can rotate. They can also butterfly back and forth. You got shoulders in and out. You have bicep rotation, but you have to move that out of the way to use the bicep rotation. Double jointed elbows, wrist swivel, waist. Ah, ah. On a, on a, on a ball joint, on a ratchet, unnecessary. Hips can go forward, they can go back. And what's really fun is when you move them, you see that gap? Yeah, not great. Ratcheted thigh swivels, knee bend that is falling apart already. Oh my God. And then ankle ball joints. However, you can't really straighten the, like this has come untapped, but it's just come untapped. But if I tap it in properly, I can't straighten the feet because of this peg here. So you constantly, and then he falls over. I got to lean him forward to stand. It's not the most pleasant thing in the world. These can move, they're on ball joints. 
They do also come off relatively easily, which I guess is a good thing. You don't want it to break. I don't know, man. This guy has no heels, which is annoying. The rest of it is fine. This one has the no heels and then every other problem. Transforming the legacy toys are solid and simple yet enjoyable. You will have seen this transformation done by countless other people, so I'm not gonna bother wasting your time with it. But the fans project ones don't like getting out of their own way a lot. There's parts that don't fit in certain places and parts that have to flex and it's very annoying. Motor Master though, Ooh, I'm only going to show you Motor Master's transformation because I don't want this video to be a thousand years long. So we'll just go into that. Okay. This thing's transformation. Oh, I need to like mentally prepare myself for this. Hang on. Open up this panel, rotate the head and flip it down. Then you want to get the shoulders oriented. I think it's, it's, it's all confusing. I'll figure it out. Okay, the arms. Slide the hand in, bring up the ratchet, rotate that. No, I'm already doing it wrong, see? This is just, this is not the toy's fault at this point. This is just me being stupid. Get all of this sort of compressed. Get the wheels back here flipped out. So far it doesn't look too bad, right? It's just oh, a harmless little transformation. And then that happens. I need to reposition myself because the tripod's getting in my way and I'm I'm 6'3", I have long arms. This is as far as I can go. It's kind of annoying. I am literally forgetting everything. This is fantastic. What is it? It's falling apart right here. What is happening? That's not a transformation step. That's just it coming apart. There we go. That, that was weird. Ah, the other problem that I have with this thing is that it is really sharp. You know what, I'm forgetting. Hang on, let's uh, let's just do a little thing real quick here. M go, M go fans project Minnesota. There we go. Okay, thank you M go. You wanna open this up and then use the horrible unnecessary ratchet in the my phone is still in shot. In the thing, I don't like that at all because it's so flexible and weird. Peg in. Pe there we go. Sit like that. Move it forward. Flip it around. Peg. Peg. Peg, you dum dum. What's rattling? It's drag strip. This is not, this is not going in. It's, it's just, oh, there we go. Yep, there we go. Okay, let's do the front cab section here and then peg it together somehow. Ah, there we go. Peg it together. There's a hook tab on the front. You want to hook it into place and then you want to sandwich this together. There we, oh God. Okay, now you bring this up and this just sort of fits around that and you just, Slam that together like that and then peg this in and then clip this over and then clip this over. The wheels are coming out, the, the wind vane's coming out. So much stuff is coming out. And there's the front of the truck. Now what's interesting about this is the guns here, the shotguns, they unfold. There we go. And you peg them together to make the door. Now, what's cool is you can actually take the door and squeeze it into there and make him a moving truck, which I think is very, very funny. I actually like this function a lot. Um, it, I'm not gonna show it in the review, the rest of it, but like here it is now. It's 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 very, very funny and I, I dig that. that. That's a cool little feature. Just get the doors out. Now let's do trailer stuff. Cause oh boy, there's a lot. There's a lot of trailer stuff. Okay, now we got both sides. You take the sword and you just tab it in to the walls of the trailer. I think this is an excellent use of weapon storage, how the weapon disassembles, disassembles and becomes the vehicle, like parts of the vehicle. I think this is really neat. Force it together. This part's always kind of annoying with the hands in the way because the hands do sort of push out on everything a little bit. So you got to squeeze. Oh yeah, and one cool thing is it doesn't matter what side is up and what side is down. They are both the same side. So that's that's really cool. This whole toy is basically just like ambidextrous. 
which is nice, but at the same time, my fingers hurt. Get in, you bitch. There we go. Come on. There we go. Door's in place. Now you take the little wheel bit, you peg it into the back. You take this, you peg it into heat. Peg it into heat. Come on. Peg it into here. There we go. And then you take the trailer and sort of haphazardly just clip it into place. Oh my God. Look, that hit me in the, the arm. See, this is, ah, uh, whatever. It's, it, you know what? It's done. We're done. That's it. I'm done. That's 13 minutes of me recording trying to transform a stupid fucker. We're done. Alt modes are pretty damn good. Sure, the Legacy Breakdown isn't a Lamborghini and a simple retooled front would have fixed that, but apparently that was also a corporate decision. So, you know, I feel sorry for Mark. He really wanted that. The alt modes in Legacy though do look like actual cars I could definitely see in real life on the road minus drag strip. In fact, I have seen these cars in real life on the road minus drag strip. That's a lie. I've seen I've seen a Formula One car on the back of a truck before. I love dead end specifically, but tabbing the back of the car in can be a pain in the ass. You have to do it a very specific way. By contrast, the Fans Project ones look more like cars you would see on Top Gear only, but they look very cool and they have some really nice shaping, especially drag strip and Wild Rider but they are a lot smaller than the Legacy ones and very, very pointy. Both sets of cars feel solid. Everything holds together very well and the Fans Project ones have actual proper weapon storage as opposed to the Legacy ones where you just plug the guns in the back or the top, other than Breakdown who has like the cool weapon storage. Motormaster though, eh, both Legacy and Fans Project Motormaster suffer in alt mode. Legacy has a really short trailer like that, that is a thing that exists in real life is short trailers, but it looks weird here. And the plastic mismatch is noticeable. They have to use different materials for several different factors like longevity, safety, etc. And you could really tell what's what. Fans Project 1 doesn't have that issue, but the issue it does have is nothing like staying tabbed in. Because of how goddamn fiddly the transformation is, nothing on this truck likes to stay in place. And it's so annoying, especially up front. That's why I much prefer the Legacy one, just cause like, it's solid, it holds together. So that's the sets. And if you want just a set of five robots that are cool and fun to mess with and solid, the Legacy one is the one I would recommend. Like, I really love the look of the Fans Project one, but just the look, everything else about it is not fun to me. It's, it's, it's annoying and painful, like physically painful. But the Legacy one just succeeds in a lot of those areas that the Fans Project one fails at, whereas the Fans Project one only succeeds at one area that the Hasbro one I think falls short to me on, which is the aesthetic. Also, nothing tells you what these are for. They're just, they just exist. My autofocus is running away from my hand. There we go, they just exist. Combining Legacy is super fluid and easy. The way they do the arms is such a neat gimmick on how they split the cars and all that. And how everything connects feels super satisfying. I also like how plugging the, the leg cars in gives you that spring-loaded gimmick. I think it's neat. However, some people have reported issues of breaking Wild Rider when unplugging him from the back of the legs. Again, Hasbro will replace it for you if you contact them. It still sucks. <laughs> Fans Project 1, on the other hand, is a whole different story. So combining the Fans Project 1 is really cool, but also kind of a mess. The trailer splits off into like different parts to become like the combined mode, but it still works the same way as the Legacy 1, where it's just a guy wearing some cars. You start by just sort of like plugging these in to here. And this brings in my first problem with the build quality is how like springy that is. Cause this doesn't go up all the way. Now attaching the legs to latch it in, you don't do the whole combiner war style slide or just plug it in. You plug it in backwards and then rotate it 180 degrees. And now the leg is in there. Now getting the arms in is pretty much the, oh, the same sort of uh, situation. You just want to line the, the pegs up with thingy, slot that into pla place, there we go. Rotate the arm down and boom. I'm just gonna go out a click. You do that, come on. Get, get, there we go. <laughs> I don't know what was happening there. Now this arm has a problem. Uh, the way that it connects with the hand is on the wheel. So it like freely spins every once in a while. Now it tabs in, the wheel does tab in. However, this wheel tabs in here but with the peg on the on the actual rim itself facing the wrong, there goes the hand. So when you go to combine it, it doesn't actually snap together. So the way you're supposed to attach the cars is you're supposed to take them in car mode and just plug them in. But 
they made these pegs longer for some reason and they're hexagonal. They're supposed to peg into like the hexagonal parts there, but because the round part of the peg is longer than it used to be, that doesn't work. So you cannot plug these guys in as normal cars into here. You have to do these weird sort of like shapes out of them that, that look weird and are not the most stable things in the world. And then you can plug them in. Otherwise they straight up just won't fit. And I don't know why Fans Project decided to do that. Cause now, now they're, now they're fitting, but they won't fit the other way. It's so strange. I, I spent maybe 15 minutes trying to just push them in before I was like, I'm going to break something. So I'm assuming that this is the intentional way to do the G2 version, but also on their product page, they have the cars the other way. So I don't know if the test shop version of this, they had to take those photos, had the original peg design. It, it had... Now these combined modes are very different from each other. And I'm going to be honest, the fans project one looks way better. The tooling, the originality, the shaping, the car integration, make it all look more dynamic than the Hasbro one and more full of life and less just gray. And while the Hasbro one doesn't look terrible by any means, I still like it. It needed a lot more color to show the car's integration for me. Like those fold out panels needed color of the actual cars on them to make it feel like the cars are combining, but they made, it, made this out of like palm plastic. So that's probably why it's not painted because the paint would come off very easily. Also, this tower thing is dumb. Ugh. What the Hasbro one has over the Fans Project one though, is its build. Again, its build quality is so much better. To better explain what I mean, let me just show you the Fans Project one. You've already seen me trying to pose it throughout here and it's just, yeah. What? Why are you sliding? So remember how I mentioned before that this one's really wobbly? Yeah, so build quality on these two is drastically different. You can't even see this one. He's not even in frame. There we go. It's drastically different. He's like, he did the splits a little. Oh, he, he's, he's splitting his legs a bit more. I'm just going to prep myself. There he goes. <laughs> um, not the, uh, and now the cars come off. Not the greatest thing in the world. The head just springs back. Shoulders can rotate. They can only go out that far because he has trigger happy shoulders, my favorite. Bicep rotation, double bend at the elbows, both elbows. This piece does not want to stay in place. Wrist swivel, but it gets blocked by a lot of stuff. It's better on this side. You got individual articulated fingers with two joints on each finger, a lot of spread and the thumb. Love to see that. Kind of wish this guy had it, but whatever. There's an upgrade kit if you want. Look at the, what's he doing the stanky leg for? You have a waist joint that is so tight. I don't know why. I've also stabbed myself with something in the back of this toy. Hips can go forward. They can go back. And they're doing that split thing again. He has ratcheted, hand fell off. He's got ratcheted thigh swivels, ratcheted above the knee swivels. That's as far as his knees will bend. And then you gotta be careful. Oh my God. You gotta be careful because this doesn't actually lock in here underneath. So that's annoying. And I think that's what's causing this knee not to bend. Oh no, it's also the peg came out. Ah, cause then the shin guard likes to come off and ruin literally everything. And then the ankle is on a ball joint that's really loose. So he likes to do that again this one really doesn't like staying in oh his foot fell off and then he fell over so now we come back to the price just to remind you the fans project one comes to about 440 canadian dollars before taxes versus the legacy one which comes to 270 dollars before taxes <coughs> and for a slightly more boring looking figure that 270 dollars is much more worth it to me the Fans Project one is almost twice as much and doesn't feel near worth twice as much of a toy. Like it looks cool, but that's all it really has going for it. 
Even its longevity can be questioned because third-party toys don't tend to last very long unless it's like fans toys or something. So this could very much crumble in a few years on me. I have no idea. At least the Hasbro one won't do that unless you're really rough with it or you got one of those earlier batches that had the broken problems. But again, they'll replace it for you. It still sucks, but they'll replace it for you. So that's my recommendation. Go for the Hasbro one. If you want to save money, the Hasbro one is the better bet because everything costs a lot more now. So you have to be smart with your money. Like I am saving for two conventions happening in July and August. My spending has been very much cut. I'm still going to spend, but I'm not going to spend nearly as much. So if I was in the market for a combiner, I would totally go for the legacy one over the fans project one because it is way too much money. It is way too much money. It's $440 of headache and I don't think you want that. And while the legacy one doesn't look as fancy schmancy, there are stickers that end up coming to about like, I think $80 in total. So you could buy those and for another 80 bucks, you could make it look even better. So I would honestly just recommend the, the Hasbro one. But which one would you pick? Let me know in the comments down below. I'm very interested. And if you made it all the way to the end of this rather long video, well, rather long for me anyways, uh, thank you. Uh, but that's my look at Legacy and Fans Project Minasaur. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.